Shipwrecked, Chapter 1, Tropical Getaway. The humid air teases the hairs at the back of your neck as you gaze down at the clear blue waters of the South Pacific. You walk along the docks until you find the rental boat. Excuse me, I'm Dr. John Lico. I'm a ecologist who booked you for the passage to Moku Island. Yeah, the boss man said to expect you. Sorry you came all this way. There's a big storm about to hit. I, I can't take you. You can and will. I need to get there ASAP. It's called Shipwreck Island for a reason. I'm not taking you there when there's a huge storm coming in. You're crazy. I know this island's dangerous, but uh, this could be my last chance to study the ecosystem before the volcano erupts. Plus, this research is my life's work. I'm working on a hypothesis that will change life as we know it. The island's mutations. Find someone else to take you. No one goes to Moku in a storm. It's a death wish. The tour guide scampers away and you're forced to find another ship. Can you help me? I'll pay you double the fee for passage to Moku Island. God, no, you're insane. Uh, but you'll be part of a discovery of a lifetime. I'll even credit you in the Ecolo Ecology Monthly. You try your luck again and again and again, but each captain tells you the same thing. You approach the final boat in sight, but the captain shakes his head as soon as you get to the word zone. Sorry, but uh, try the Kona winds on the other side of the harbor. The captain's the only person crazy enough to sail in these conditions. Not to mention, pretty easy on the eyes, too. He winks at you before returning to his work. He follows directions that you find a boat with the name Kona Winds printed on the hull. You can barely make out a figure shuffling around below deck as you call out. Uh, hey there, uh, Captain. I've been looking for someone to take me to... Stop short as the stranger turns around. You take in the side of the sexy captain. This is a single love interest book. Choose the look of your sexy companion carefully. Who is your captain? A woman. We've got captain one. Two. Three. Show male options. You know, just let's see what the male options are just for shits and giggles. One. Two. Three. I mean, I can see a lot of women are probably going to choose three. Go with Captain One. Captain Three since, seems like she spends too much time on her hair. Ugh, the local wasn't kidding about her being easy on the eyes. If you're looking for a tour of the island, the fancy smancy boats are further down. I already tried. They're with no luck. No one's brave enough to take me to Moku Island. What do you expect? A few make it there without getting smashed to bits, and that's without the storm. Well, uh, but this is a chance to be on the forefront of a real scientific change. I was told you might be up for the challenge. No. I run cargo, not passengers. Um, but what if I, uh, offer you double your rate? I I'm not looking for a handout. I I'll make it well worth your, uh, well worth your while for the risk. Hmm, well, when you put it that way, no. If I were you, I'd try down there again. They cater to tourists like you, yourself. That's it. First off, I'm not a tourist. I'm an ecologist from L.A. Here to make a discovery of a lifetime on Moku. Second, I've traveled too far too long to let cowards like you ruin my research. You're now fast face to face with her. Only inches separating you. All the pent-up frustration from your day finally reaching its boiling point. So if you won't take me, fine. I'll pilot my own boat. Steer. It's not a plane, Doc. You throw your hands up in the air and storm away. Happy to put distance between you and the captain. She'll see. I will get to Moku and I just need a boat. You stare out at the pristine blue of the ocean with the dock's edge, racking your brain for ideas. Your thoughts are interrupted by approaching footsteps, and you turn around to face the stranger. So, you've come to your si- Okay. But you stop short upon realizing it's not the same stranger from before. The imposing woman stares you down her eyes as piercing as daggers. 
Overheard you're trying to get to Moko. Don't. Fly home before you get yourself killed or worse. I'm getting to that island. Um, not that it's any of your damn business. Read my lips, back off. I've had it up to here with trying to find an ounce of kindness in a boat today. Fine, but no, you brought this on yourself. Release a sigh of relief as she storms off, but you've only taken your eyes off her for a second when you hear a swishing sound behind you. You turn just in time to see a large wooden boom swing down from one of the boats, knock straight into you. The force throws you off the dock, and you plunge down beneath the waves. You struggle to swim towards the surface, but quickly realize your body is tangled in ropes. It's around my neck, can't breathe. You claw at the ropes, cutting into your skin, your movements growing more frantic. Everything blurs as a figure crashes in the water beside you, holding something large and shiny. She has cometh to rescueth. Help! Even though you're underwater, it sounds like... Reach towards her. Your plea coming out is a little more of a strangled gurgle. She makes quick work with a diving knife, slicing through the ropes like butter. As soon as the last rope is removed, she secures her toned arm around your waist and helps you swim to the surface. <coughs> Coughs rack your body as a stranger bo boosts you onto the docks. She presses a gentle hand against your back while you expel water from your lungs. Take it easy, dog. You swallow a lot of water. Where is she? Where did you see the woman who knocked me in? You look around, but there's no one else on the dog. I was a bit preoccupied with the drowning tourist. Though I could have sworn she looked like... Never mind. Wherever she is, she's long gone by now. After finally catching your breath, you look up and gaze upon the woman who jumped in the water to help a complete stranger. A brow froze in concern, or she's, you're sharply aware of her heat radiating from her hand, which remains pressed against your back. You saved me. I couldn't let you drown. Dead tourists are bad for business. Offer her my hand. You extend a grateful hand towards her. She holds it in hers, and you feel a spark run up your arm at her touch. I wouldn't be here without you. Uh, thank you. She holds your gaze for a moment, then finally lets go of your hand and rubs the back of her neck nonchalantly. You're welcome, but really, it was nothing. You just strengthen your survival bond. Throughout this book, you'll receive more chances to grow your bond with your love interest. If your bond is strong enough, you'll unlock an exclusive pass and improve your chances of surviving in One Piece. Darn it, I was hoping to be like Luffy from One Piece and have no bonds and, you know... Come out with a peg leg. I mean, what? I'm John, by the way. Dr. John Lico. I figure you should know the name of uh, the person you rescued. Who's your sexy savior's name? Manu? What? Listen, the last name was also stupid. It was Nakely, so I went with one of the uh, famous female pirates that most of you probably don't know about. Her name is Anne Bonnie. Just Anne Bonnie. No fancy letters or titles here. Well, um, just Anne Bonnie. I'm lucky you came by when you did. It's not every day when a hot-headed, stubborn tourist thinks they can make it on Moku. But who knows, with your amount of fire, you might just have what it takes if you don't drown. You... truly have a way with words. I can't imagine why else I would waste my time talking to such a crazy jackass captain. You're the one who needed a ride, not me, dog. You really have to call me that? Mm, I could always call you a tourist. She offers her hand to you. You feel the rough calluses on her fingers as she pulls you to your feet. Anyway, good luck with your work trip, if you can find a boat, that is. Yeah, thanks for stopping back by. But she doesn't let go, almost like she doesn't want to, and an idea forms in your head. Okay, maybe we can come to an arrangement. I'm desperate here, and as you've noticed, very stubborn. Uh, and I've told you before, I'm not a water taxi. Uh, but you do run a cargo business. Think of me and my stuff as cargo. Cargo doesn't talk so much. Well, uh, it doesn't pay either. It'd have to be a lot to be worth my time. 
triple your rate. Mm, I won't go less than four. Three and a half times your rate. Anyone else tell you you're difficult, or am I the first? You catch her eyes fixed upon your lips, and you feel her resolve begin to crumble before you. Come on, Anne. Mm. You're not really afraid of an island, are you? Maybe I need to find someone braver, stronger, you know, more familiar with these waters. You won't find anyone more equipped to take you there than me. Realize that Anne is only inches away from you. So close you can feel her warm breath against your lips. Hmm. Haven't you had something you cared about that you would do anything for? At your words, she gets a far off look in her eyes. She takes a long pause and then slowly nods. Fine, you've got yourself a captain. Oh, seriously? You'll be my guide to Moku? Don't make me regret this. You gather your belongings and meet Anne at her boat. Her eyes widen at the amount of luggage you haul aboard. Ever heard of packing lightly? Not when it comes to my research. You never know what a few days in the field will require. Sure, you want to store any valuables in one of those waterproof containers. Anne unlocks one of the bins strapped to the side of the boat. Seems a bit excessive, but okay. Not really. Not if your ship flips or, you know, you have valuables you don't want to, like, break. You place your equipment and whatever belongings you can fit inside the container. Anne reattaches it to the side and then goes back to preparing the boat. So, uh, when should we expect to reach Moku? Whenever we get there, though things would go fast if you helped. She suddenly tosses a rope to you into your lap, causing you to jump in surprise. What am I supposed to do with this? Help me cast off, Doc. Prove that you can handle what you've signing up for. Help her improve your... Uh, help her cast off. I can handle things. Uh, anything you throw at me. Especially ropes. We'll see about that. She gestures for you to follow her down the dock. She kneels down and reaches for the rope in your hands as you crouch down beside her. The heat of her hand lingers against her skin as she pulls away. You still haven't told me what you expect me to do. I expect you to follow orders on the captain when I say goes. Mm, you have my undivided attention. I'll do whatever you say. Your breath hitches as she watches you carefully. Her lips curl into a small smirk. No questions asked. I'm a scientist. Questions are in my blood. Even if we're in danger? Mm, what kind of danger are we talking about? She rises to meet your challenging gaze. A danger beyond your wildest imagination. Mm, so what do you want me to do, ma'am? She gestures to the double-sided hook affixed to the dog. I want you to adjust these ropes so they loop around the cleat. That's the hook here. Then tie the line back onto the boat. She demonstrates wrapping the rope around the base of the metal fixture before leading you onto the deck. Just across from the dock, she kneels in front of a similar cleat on the boat. Tie the line off with a knot called a cleat hitch. Watch. Her nimble fingers weave the rope around the metal. She works slowly so you can follow along. So it's like a figure eight around the cleat. Basically, just make sure the rope is nice and tight. She takes your hands in hers and shows you how to tie it off. You feel her muscles ripple against your skin as she pulls with all of her mind. Got it. I uh, could use some more personal instruction. After all, I want to make sure I know what I'm doing. And make sure I do it right. You slowly ease back against her, letting her arms encircle yours. You feel her body tense for a moment as your bare skin remains pressed against hers. If that's what you'd prefer. A breath is hot against your neck as her hands guide yours, showing you how to loop the rope snugly around the cleat. Your bodies move as one, gliding the long rope around and over and on the cool metal horn protruding from the boat. I, I think I'm getting the hang of it.
She eases her fingers from yours as you fasten the knot, lingering on the smooth surface on your, your wrists. I'm sure you can finish on your own. Well, I um, bet I'd uh, go faster with you. Ah, I see what we're doing there. Her deep laugh reverberates through your entire body, and she shakes her head. You're not getting out of helping that easy. You sigh and then make quick work of the remaining ropes around the ship as Anne adjusts the sails. All done. You can call me the Master of Ropes now. Is that so? Go ahead. Test me. Mm, I was hoping you'd say that. And grabs a rope from a nearby bucket. More rope. Want me to make another knot? I can dazzle you with more of my rope tying skills. She chuckles, and then in flash, she wraps the rope tightly around one of your wrists. With a tug of the long end, she hoists your arms above your body, pinning them in place. Hey! Well, I didn't know it was going to turn into this. Who's the master of ropes now? I see the title to you. You feel the coarse rope tickle your wrists as you lean closer to her. I'll admit you're the master of ropes, though I like to think I'm at least, um, understudy to the rope master. She chuckles and takes a step towards you, standing only a hair's breadth away. Mm, you should have tied me up when you had the chance. Well, you didn't really give me the chance, so... Eh, it's gonna be a long journey to Moku. Trust me, you'll have plenty of chances later. You watch her eyes flicker to your lips for a second before she shakes her head and takes a step back. She twirls the end of the rope in her hand. You learn out here. Rope is your life. Its strength helps you move. She tugs the rope for good measure. You watch her muscles tense as she makes her point. Its reliability keeps you safe. And its uh, firmness? Your eyes sweep down her body, noting the tight curve of her ass in her pants. That be for my eyes only. She slowly, deliberately turns, giving you a full view before suddenly letting go of the rope. That's just mean. Your arms fall to your sides and you're easily able to slip out of your bindings. Aw, oh, is the fun over already? Oh, it's just beginning. And starts the engine, casts off a few lines, and soon you're sailing through the harbor. A voice calls out from the dogs. Good luck! If the rocks don't get you, something else will. Wouldn't be the first time Love lost a boat, right, Anne? Her jaw tenses and her grip on the steering wheel tightens. You've lost a boat before? It's not my fault a former partner screwed me over. I mm, guess that explains the lone wolf vibes. I'm not in the mood for your, my passenger to get in my head right now. Mm, maybe if you just told me what happened. No. It's the one subject I avoid. That's all. Fine, fine. I'll ask no more. For now. You watch her muscles flex as she cranks the wheel hard as the docks grow tiny behind you. Get over here, Doc. You should know how to steer. Do you teach all of your passengers how to steer a damn boat after getting on him? You join her at the wheel and grab it tightly. She stands behind you, chuckling as she places her hands over yours. Ease up. You're steering, not playing tug-of-war. The trick is to have a firm yet flexible grip. Like this. Her chest presses into your back as she adjusts your hold. Hmm. That already feels better on my knuckles. 
Remember, a boat's not a car. Turning a wheel a little goes a long way. But no cranking it unless you're about to crash. You line up the ship and carefully turn it towards the open sea. Sure, hands hover over yours, giving you complete control. This isn't as bad as I thought. So, you can drive us to Moku, right? I'll be below taking a nap. A uh, warmth against your body suddenly disappears. You grab her arm and pull her back to you. Ah, uh, hey, not so fast. And, uh, I'm liable to crash without your guidance. Careful, boat damage isn't covered under my fee. Whoops. You pretend to veer the ship towards the rocks. She jumps to her feet, returning to your side once more. Oh, you're back. No long time, no see. You know, you're pretty persuasive when you want to be. Eh, it comes in handy when I try to wrangle certain captains and take me to deserted islands. She shakes her head as she her hands return to help you steer. <sighs> I guess it could be worse. You relax against her. Your body's pressed close enough together for your uh, for you to smell a hint of coconut on her. Ah, say what you will. I think we make a good team. Uh, I wouldn't go that far, but you can hold your own well enough. You literally just gave me the boat for five seconds while you stood there. You turn back towards her as her hold remains tied around you. You catch her glancing down at your lips for the briefest of seconds before her gaze returns to the sea. Mugu Island, here we come. As the boat glides across the waves, a breeze cuts through your still damp clothes. You shiver from the cold running down your spine. I didn't realize how strong the wind chill would be out here. I'm freezing in these wet clothes. Well, there's a bathroom below deck if you want to change. I wouldn't say no to something drier. Grab your bag and trot down to the small but yet clean bathroom below. You wash the salt and grime from your hair and body, then I the floral shirt peeking out from inside your bag. Really? Maybe I should change it up and surprise Anne before we reach Moku. Get him to the tropics. Oh boy. Feeling refreshed and clean. You finish buttoning your floral shirt, and then look out at yourself in the mirror, lauding in approval. Said no one ever. Not half bad, I look pretty good if I do say so myself. For a doctor. You know, people that wear the floral things are just... <laughs> not gonna lie, I don't get. But moving on. <laughs> you emerge back on the deck to find a hand manning the wheel, guiding the boat further into the vast blue ocean. Welcome to my office. You move closer to the bow to get a better view of the horizon. The sunlight dances off the surface of the water for miles in every direction. It's simply not a lap, that's for sure. She looks up from the horizon, her eyes finding you twinkling as she takes you in. You clean up nice. Ah, you mean the man overboard, Luke, wasn't doing it for you? Your words, not mine. So why Moku? There's gotta be dozens of islands with remote beaches for you to visit. Well, someone has a, to catalog its unique ecosystems before Mount Moku erupts in a year, wipes out all life on the island. Studying some plants can't be worth all the risks. Look. Mm. I go where I'm needed for my job. It must be hard to be chained to a job like that. For your information, I love my job. I get to travel the world, make very uh, make scientific discoveries. And I have no life outside of work. Like, when you feel this passion about something, it's no longer just a job. It sounds like you actually believe that. After sailing a few hours, you spawn an island appearing on the horizon. As you draw near, you see massive clouds surrounding the distant greenery. That's Moku. We'll be there in no time. Excellent. There's a series of caves I noticed on the satellite images that we could visit first. They might contain some new species of island floral. Listen, she's a captain of a boat, not your tour guide. Holy shit. Is this necessary if you're already figured out with your fancy satellite? Absolutely. We spotted mutatis, uh species of 
Heliconia, Red Torch Ginger, and um, Ohio Lehu that are affecting the wildlife's behavioral patterns. It could be due to something like unique in Mount Moku soil, but without physical samples, we can't know for certain. If you insist, where do you say this cave was? Um, I noted on my phone, which have zero bars now. Hmm, get used to it. Nobody gets service out here. Good thing I've got this. She opens a thick atlas on the wheel, finds Moku Island, and you take a moment to study the outline of the coast before pointing to a series of jagged shapes. Her knuckles brush yours as she presses her fingertip to the map. Her body is inches from yours as she leans around to steady the wheel with her free hand. Hmm, we might have a problem. That area is inaccessible from the water. You'll have to rappel down from the cliffs here. She drags your finger from the cave system to an outline on the island. The gulp as her body presses against you, in case we hadn't indicated that the first three times. Your heart pounding in your chest. You just remember, this vacation was your idea, dog. It's not a vacation and stop calling me dog. Oh, for the love of who gives a shit? She winks at you, chuckling to herself. You grit your teeth and return to your seat near the bow as dark clouds loom overhead. The waters grow choppy as you approach the island, and the boat bucks beneath you. A heavy mist surrounds the island, hiding sharp, jagged rocks. I knew storms could come out of nowhere here, but this is something else. The boat veers away from a series of gray spikes, the sails whipping savagely as she masterfully guides it around the obstacles. Seconds later, a gust of wind with enough force to capsize the boat rams into you. But somehow, she uses its power to move steadily forward instead. So pretty much she pilots this ship like I do most ships in Sea of Thieves. You're making this look easy. Years of experience. You look towards the horizon, just as a thick fog shifts, revealing a massive rock directly in your path. Look out, we're gonna crash! Oh, okay. Well, that ended abruptly. Let me guess, we crash? Huh! <laughs> Without further ado, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Subscribing will let you uh, join the community. You know, also, if you hit that bell icon, you receive notifications of when content is uploaded. I want you to keep in mind, we have over 3,400 videos on this channel. Tons of choices slash uh, visual novel types, but a lot of other varying types of content as well. Anywhere from reviews to uh, little shorts to a gameplay of a lot of other games. Um, which, if you are in the mood for a Choices-type game, you cannot go wrong with Detroit Becomes Human. I love that game. I've played it so many times, I can't even just... Oh, that game is amazing. But, without further ado, thanks for watching. I'll catch y'all later. Peace out.